Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So my elder brother purchased the HP Pavilion Gaming 15 1024AX base model on my recommendation and I did an unboxing video of it. Check it out if you haven't seen it. So today I'm back with the stress test results as promised. Guys, I want to say even though this is kind of a personal device, I'm not going to be biased or defend it in any ways. You'll get all the results fair and square. Alright, so without any further ado, let's see how good or bad is the thermal performance of the Asian Pavilion 15 with Ryzen 5 4600H and GTX 1650 graphics. So before showing you the results, let's take a look how the internals look like. As you can see, this laptop has the old thermal design where the fans are right beside each other and share the same large heatsink. This design doesn't fare well with inefficient Intel processors and I was also a bit skeptical on how the thermals would be affected as this old design now has to cool a processor with 6 cores and 12 threads. The bottom panel has massive air intakes which definitely helps in keeping the CPU cool. The motherboard has support for NVMe SSD and as you can see I have put a basic SATA SSD of 120GB of, from Western Digital which is enough in my situation. I haven't yet installed dual channel RAM so this laptop is running 8GB DDR4-3200MHz RAM in single channel. So today's test suite includes CPU stress test using Cinebench R20, GPU stress test using Unigen Heaven and 3 Mark Firestrike and a real world CPU intensive game called Far Cry 5. I have also used Ryzen controller to compare CPU and thermal performance with the stock results. For the monitoring tools I have used hardware info and FPS monitor. Now unlike in the HP Omen, the Pavilion's gaming hub is utterly useless as it only provides monitoring tools, no performance tweaking or manual fan controls. So all the tests have been conducted in the Windows high performance mode. Alright, first up Cinebench. So what you are seeing here is how the CPU temps will be when it is being stressed with an all core CPU rendering load. Now I have been continuously running Cinebench R20 multi-core and this is the fifth continuous run that you are seeing right now. The reason is that HP has tuned the fans in such a way that it definitely prefers acoustics over heat. So the fans stay silent as long as possible until the temperatures are too high. So I'm running Cinebench continuously to ramp up the fans as much as possible. And considering this behavior, the CPU temperatures are quite good because most of the times with Cinebench render, almost two thirds completed, the fans are still not that loud. It picks up maximum speed only in the last 30 seconds of the render. Clock speeds remain in the 3.9 GHz regions and the scores are consistently high, definitely among the highest scored by a Ryzen 5 4600H. And there you go, 3360. Let's go once again for our sixth run. I almost forgot to mention how this laptop actually maxes out the configurable TDB for the Ryzen 5 4600H at nearly 53 watts and I can often see it reaching 55 watts at the beginning of a test which is quite incredible. And as you can see the score increased to 3364. Nice. Okay, since the laptop doesn't come with any performance profiles, let's make our own basic profile using Ryzen controller. So I found just putting specific temperature limits is enough as the system behaves accordingly to meet our temperature requirements. So no need to fiddle with TDP and all. So for Cinebench which is a productivity benchmark, I'm gonna use the productivity preset which caps the CPU temps at 90 degrees centigrade, which I think is fair for a 6 core CPU. Okay, let's go. Okay, so there you go, still well above 3300. So basically we lost less than 1% of performance and dropped average temperature in an all core load by 4 to 5 degrees centigrade. So I think if HP would have given us manual fan controls, it would have been great. But using Ryzen controller mitigates most of our problems, that is even if we consider it to be a problem in the first place. Now here are some of the highest scores that I got from this laptop, 3379, 3382 and 3384, pretty fantastic. Share your scores down in the comments. 
Moving on to some GPU tests, first using Unigen Heaven. Now the GPU in this laptop is the Nvidia GTX 1650 with 4GB of GDDR6 memory. Now guys, please ignore the memory clock in this overlay, it's showing wrong info since yesterday. It's actually 6000 MHz instead of 1500 MHz. Anyways, the 1650 in this laptop performs like any other 1650 with GDDR6 memory. It's only a 50W GPU and doesn't get hot at all. So I'm gonna let Unigen run for a while and then I'm gonna move on to the 3D Mark Fire Strike. So in 3 d Mark Firestrike, I'm particularly interested in showing you the physics test which is CPU intensive and then the CPU and GPU combined test. As you can see, the temps are well under control for both the CPU and the GPU. Not really a surprise here. So a graphics score of 9791 puts it extremely close to the 1650 Ti as I've always said there is barely any difference between the two GPUs. Alright for the temps while gaming I have chosen Far Cry 5 because it's notoriously CPU intensive. I'm gonna be running the benchmark in ultra settings and I'm gonna show how the game runs in stock settings and with Ryzen controller with our game preset applied tapping the CPU temperature at 85 degrees centigrade. Now as you can see in this benchmark there isn't much of a difference in temperature for that I'll show you some real gameplay. And as you can see, not really a surprise here, with Ryzen controller, we did not lose any performance at all. Now even in real world gameplay in Far Cry 5 specifically, the stock performance in terms of CPU temps is pretty good for 95% of the times, with temps in the mid 80s. I wish HP would release a BIOS update to lock the CPU at 25 watts in games as that's enough for Ryzen 5 4600H to maintain 4000MHz boost clocks, or actually 3993MHz. But here the HP unnecessarily draws in 35 watts of power for no extra performance. The rest 5% of the time I have seen spikes in the high 90s for a couple of seconds before it drops to the mid 80s again. And that's solely because of the extra 10 watts of CPU power draw. Completely unnecessary. You'll see those spikes when roaming through the open world and especially inside the forests with complex foliage. The easiest way to mitigate this annoying issue is to use Ryzen controller which simply caps the CPU temps and that in turn drops the CPU power draw without any loss in performance. Another thing that drops CPU temps in many games and also gives you a much smoother gameplay is enabling VSync which I 100% recommend. Enabling VSync will give you a much smoother experience as the screen tearing is atrocious. So definitely enable VSync, it's only a 60Hz panel after all without any free sync support. I'd rather have a smooth gaming experience than get 70 FPS with screen tearing. Just my personal preference. So overall, what did we learn? Well, in terms of cons, I definitely hate the fact that HP has given us no controls in the HP Game Center, making it utterly useless. And although the laptop maintains a good noise to performance ratio, I always prefer manual fan controls and it's something I sorely miss coming from my Acer Predator. And also I like to mention 
the 35 watt TDP set for the CPU in games, which is completely unnecessary. As we have seen, the best 1650 laptop, that is Ryzen 5 4600H Acer Nitro 5, only draws about 25 watts in games and keeps CPU temperatures well below 80 degrees centigrade without loss of any performance. In terms of the pros, well, the CPU performance is excellent with good temps in stock settings and even better with Ryzen controller. The Cinnamon scores are also some of the highest I have seen for Ryzen 5 4600H, easily crushing the Core i7 10 Gen. 10750H. And for the 650 GPU, it performs just as expected. No surprises there. Overall, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. I hope someone makes a manual fan control profile for the notebook, fan control software, and Ryzen controller is always there at our service. Alright, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Next up, we'll test the gaming performance of this laptop, so definitely subscribe for that and also ring the notification bell icon. Alright, guys, see you in the next one. Peace.